Now, my next guest is involved in an important campaign with Fairness First and Caitlyn Jenner to save women's sport on the 51st anniversary of Title IX. He's also put out a powerful video as part of that campaign. Let's have a look. 51 years ago, Title IX was passed to protect women. But today, Title IX is under assault by the Biden regime. The Biden administration is now proposing new regulations. The proposed change would make categorically banning all transgender athletes a violation of Title IX. We have to protect women's sports. Biological boys do not belong in girls' sports. Stop this madness. Fight back today. Joining me now is author and Fairness First spokesperson, Ollie London. Ollie, thank you so much for your time. Can you explain the importance of Title IX and why the Biden administration wants to change it? It seems that this is an article of faith for, for the Biden White House. On his very first day in office, Joe Biden signed an executive order to combat what he called discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. What's that going to mean for girls and young women? Well, Title IX was put in place 51 years ago to um, ban sex-based discrimination and to protect the rights of women. So women have, in sports, have been benefiting from this rule that has protected them. It's given them a platform and a chance to express themselves and, and you know, uh, express their fundamental rights. And what's happening now is Biden has proposed an amendment to Title IX which would actually um, ban federal funding to schools and colleges that um, ban or discriminate against trans athletes. So basically, it's an amendment to the law which would say that any school that says no trans athletes in girls' sports will lose their federal funding, which is a serious thing for, because most of these schools are funded by the government. Um, so it's very, very concerning mm. that Biden is pushing this. So this is why it's important for people to fight back. And Caitlyn Jenner's been speaking out. Uh, there's been some big athletes in America. Inga Thomas, Lance Armstrong is just launching a new documentary series exploring this topic. So it's a pivotal moment in history because if we don't fight for women now, they're going to lose their rights. Absolutely. And the fact that this is promoted as some sort of uh, measure of equality or to bring fairness, I mean, the, the trans athletes are not banned, are they, Ollie? They just have to compete in the men's competition, the, the, the gender they were born into, uh, so they can still compete. They just can't compete in the women's competition if they were born male. That seems to be where this confusion comes from about, you know, who's being discriminated against. Absolutely, because no one's actually being discriminated against. Biological males are welcome to compete in sports, but they have to compete in a category that matches their identity. So the real issue is, you know, people trying to take away the rights of women, because women have fought for decades to have their own sports. Women have fought to have their sports on an equal footing with men, because, you know, still women's sports today, they're not watched as much um, with higher audience figures as men's sports. So women have really fought for this for so long. So it's the fact that these athletes are trying to take this away from women when they have the right to compete in their biological uh, category. And indeed, there are some organisations now proposing this. Um, some cycling races are now um, having open men's categories where transgender non-binary athletes can compete, which I think is fair because at the end of the day, everybody has the right to compete in sports. Nobody wants anyone to be excluded, but it's simply about fairness because we know biological boys have an advantage. So that's why Fairness First organization um, is very pivotal for trying to defend the rights of women. Well, absolutely. I mean, there's a reason why we have men's and women's competitions. Uh, if we didn't, uh, the men would pretty much win everything. So there's a reason why women have to compete against women. It is just grossly unfair to do it any other way. Uh, now, I want to ask you about... Uh, Pride Month. We're in the midst of Pride Month and we've had Pride parades in cities across the US and elsewhere. And many of them, though, lately, Ollie, seem to be nothing more than public displays of nudity. And once again, parents are bizarrely choosing to bring their kids to these events. Just have a look at what I'm talking about.
That last clip is a march led by the Scouts of America. So children are part of some of these marches and they're certainly in the audience but some of the behaviour in these marches is certainly not what children should be exposed to, Ollie. It's absolutely abhorrent. I mean, we saw Seattle Pride where the naked cyclists were cycling. There was even a child in the parade with these naked male cyclists you know, flashing their genitals. You have children in the crowd staring in horror while their parents clap and cheer. Um, you have uh, New York City Pride where there are people naked with their breasts and genitals out and again, children in the crowd. And all of these events are dubbed family friendly by the organizers of these events. And we have to think as well, a lot of these events have big corporate sponsorship. Toronto Pride, which featured uh, naked transgender males flashing their breasts on stage, was sponsored by Bud Light. So they clearly haven't learned their lessons. So mm. I just think it's really shocking to see this and no child should be exposed to this. And to be honest, shame on the parents that bring a child to a parade like this but also shame on the organisers of these prides because pride was once about love, equality and acceptance. What happened to that, Rita? Because there are so many gay, lesbian, bisexual people that are outraged by this that do not identify with this and it's basically turned modern pride into a fetish parade. Well, absolutely. And Andrew Doyle wrote a piece basically explaining that. I mean, he's a, he's a gay man himself and he's talked about how something that was a celebration of equality has turned into something entirely different and something that a lot of gays and lesbians really don't want to be a part of anymore. We'll talk about that later in the program. And I've got coming up in Lefties Losing it all sorts of clips from these pride marches of, uh, again, behaviour that children should not be exposed to. And, Ollie, I guess that's why we're seeing a bit of a... Uh, backlash. Uh, people who were previously supportive of, of Pride Month and, and these marches or who were at least uh, apathetic about it, they really didn't care, li live and let live. But now there's this new hostility that you can detect in the community because there's behaviours there that are, well, abhorrent, some of them. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. Behaviours that the overwhelming majority of the population would not support, like we just saw, uh, completely nude men uh, parading in front of children. I mean, it really is sickening to watch that when there are children involved. And again, it's very sad for actual LGBT people that do not want to be classed with this. They don't identify with that. So really these pride organizers the people taking part in these naked fetish marches are actually doing a disservice to their own community these people are single-handedly causing more harm to uh, lgbt people lesbian gay bisexual who are just living their life they fought for decades to have acceptance for their right to love who they want to love and for equality and all of that hard work is sadly being undone by these people with these harnesses these fetishes the dog leather masks and then, you know, flashing their penises and vaginas in front of children. It's just abhorrent. And, you know, it's, it's really shameful. And so many gay people, lesbians, reach out to me and say, look, we've had enough of this. What can we do? Because really in the last year, we've seen this drastic push to sexualize the LGBT community and also to push this on children. We're seeing thousands of children being medically transitioned, having their body parts removed. Um, some states like California are proposing laws to make uh, it child abuse if a parent doesn't affirm the child's agenda. So, you know, this is really coming to a breaking point. And unless we all speak up now, unless the decent members of the LGBT community speak up and say, look, this has gone too far, we need to stop, we need to get back to where we were, you know, 10, 20 years ago. Unless those people speak up, I'm afraid, you know, that we're going to see a lot more backlash against this community. Absolutely. Now, I can't let you go without getting your insight on this new poll. According to YouGov, Meghan Markle's popularity has plummeted further. How low can she go? YouGov's latest data found the Duchess's net positivity rating stands at minus 47%. That's the lowest rating since YouGov began polling on the Duchess back in 2017. Ollie, what can Meghan do to improve her image? She keeps uh, winning daft awards, but these meaningless honours aren't fooling anyone. Well, she's really damaged her own image. I mean, we've seen how privileged she is. She's living in a Montecito mansion. She's got a royal title. And all she seems to do is complain and moan about how difficult her life is. And I think she's really out of touch because I saw her Netflix series with Harriet and, um, and Harry and Meghan. I just thought it was really boring, to be honest, because 
look, uh, they got paid a hundred million dollars for that. I mean, they thought they were going to be the new Kardashians. There was no drama. It was literally them, not even in their own house. They actually put up a picture of Princess Diana on the wall, pretending it was their house. It wasn't even their own house. So I think because <laughs> Meghan has no authenticity, people see this kind of false veneer. It's not a real person. She's just using Harry and stuff. So I think that looks bad. And interestingly today, the CEO of United Talent Agency, one of the top three biggest talent agencies in Hollywood, actually called her talentless. He basically said she's not a great audio talent, she's not a great talent at all. And just because she's famous doesn't mean she has any talent. So that's very telling from one of the biggest talent agencies. She's been dropped by Spotify. Dan Wooten, the Daily Mail columnist, said today that there's talk of Netflix dropping them because they haven't delivered on their promises. So I think people have just got fatigue. They see her privilege. They see her constantly whining and moaning and all this wokeness. And she's just so out of touch. Oh, you wrapped it up right then and there. Ollie London, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Rita.